Hi guys. So I really debated making this video for a lot of reasons. Obviously this is not really my normal setup. This is not normally how I do things. I like to have scripts and make essays and do a whole kind of long thing. But um, I think with everything going on right now that doesn't really feel super appropriate. Um, the idea that I was going to make for this video doesn't really feel super appropriate anymore. So, um, I just thought I would do something a little bit different and just be kind of honest and open and just express how I feel about this because I, well, I, I'm not known for being silent on anything. Um, even if, you know, it's, it's funny because I, I thought about not making this video because I really feel like on the one hand, I think this is a time when I think white people really need to stand in solidarity with black people, but I also think we need to shut the fuck up because I feel like we have a habit of taking things over and making things about ourselves. Even if we had quote unquote good intentions, I feel like that's ultimately what ends up happening is that it just becomes all about us and all about our feelings and blah, 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 blah. And nobody needs that, right? Especially not now. We need to be listening to the people who are going through so much pain and anguish and let's be real. And I said this on my personal Facebook page and I've been thinking about this a lot. It, it seems very clear to me, and this is not new to me either, but this seems very clear that people of color, in particular black people, have been dealing with the pandemic long before COVID came along. And that's just a reality. And that pandemic is racism, it's white supremacy, it's police brutality, all of which are not so much separate things, but kind of one big overarching problem that has been leading to a lot of trauma and pain and suffering that is not acceptable. And I think is very, um, it's heart wrenching to see. And so I wanted to make this video because I think it's important that we as white people in particular have conversations with each other about this, because let's be honest, I think a lot of the people that are out there who don't understand what's going on, who don't see this for what it is. I think they're not, unfortunately, they're probably not going to be listening to black people. They're not going to be listening to the people who are actually deeply affected by this, but they might listen to you and I. And, you know, I know change starts at home. It starts with talking to people in your family. It starts with talking to your friends and making sure that you understand and educate yourselves and are aware of what's going on, not just what's going on right in this moment, because this isn't a new thing. And this isn't something that's just going to, you know, even when the protests end, uh, this isn't going to go away. This isn't something that you can just sweep under the rug. We've tried to do that before. And that's how we get to situations like this. I think what we're seeing now is an eruption of emotions that have been centuries in the making that unfortunately we have forced people to ignore and we've forced people to try and push down. Unfortunately, um, you know, this is what happens. You get into a situation where you, people just can't take it anymore, but I, something feels different about this and I can't really put my finger on it. To me, something feels different about this. I don't know. Maybe I'm just this is just in my head and I'm hoping that it's true and that there is something different about this and that ultimately we will see a change. And I just want to say that regardless of whether or not my opinion matters, I am so incredibly supportive of the people protesting. I am supportive of, you know, everyone who is out there standing up for this and speaking out about this. I think it's important that we listen to people of color. I think it's important that we listen to black people and we hear what they're saying and we hear their pain and that we don't, you know, try and ignore it and we don't try and push it away, even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it makes us feel bad. I think then we needed to hear it even more 
because obviously there is something there that we need to understand and that we're not getting. And, you know, I'm wary of, (sighs) I'm wary of the idea of things just, you know, eventually just going back to, you know, everyone wants to get back to normal. You know, that's the way they're talking about the pandemic. That's the way they're talking about this. Everyone always wants to get back to the normal that feels familiar and easy. But the problem is familiar and easy is what gets us into these situations in the first place. You know, we didn't end up having a global pandemic because, you know, we were doing, you know, not we were doing super complicated things like that was, we were following the normal way. And now we're in a situation where we had to do things that were completely abnormal in order to save a lot of people. And it seems to me that we're going to have to do something out of the box, the way we did with COVID to fix this situation. If that makes sense. I don't know what the answer is. You know, I'm certainly a supporter of people who want to change, you know, the police system, change the laws and change how we do that. Maybe even completely dismantling the police system entirely. I think anything is better than what we have. And I think anything is better than what is currently the standard. And, you know, I I would like to say that the answer is, you know, everyone always says, oh, just, you know, there's just a few bad apples. You just got to get rid of them. I, I think we're seeing now that it's more than a few. And that if we actually just got rid of the few bad apples, we might be left with what? Three police officers in the country. That's not going to be, what is that going to do for us? And the problem is, as people have pointed out, if you have three people who are doing bad shit and 20 people who are covering it up and ignoring it, that's not the answer. You know, we have to be more outraged about this. We have to see this as something that needs to change and something that needs to be fixed. Starts with change at home and it starts with having conversations with people in your own personal life and trying to explain to them what is happening and to help them understand why this matters and you know why this is a problem because i think we all have some family members who are uh, politically right politically on the you know far right spectrum i think we all have family members in some degree or fashion who we've maybe let slide with things because we didn't want to cause drama. We didn't want to cause fights. We didn't want to cause upset feelings or whatever. And I think that's part of the problem is that a lot of us have been uncomfortable calling out family members in particular. And I think that's where we really need to have these conversations. And that's it, you know, change starts at home. I I'm fully, uh, I fully believe in donating to whatever fund that you're able to. Um, I know there's a lot of bail funds. I will, you know, try and post any links that I can, but I also know that not everyone is going to be able to do that. I think ultimately that's what makes the difference is having these uncomfortable conversations and being willing to just be open and honest. And, you know, if you don't know all the answers, do your research, do your homework. You know, the information is out there. You cannot expect people of color to teach you forever. I think a lot of the things that we're seeing now that maybe some people are just hearing about for the first time are things that a lot of people have known for their entire lives. And if they haven't known it for their entire lives, um, you know, they educated themselves and they learned. And I think that's going to make all the difference in the world. So You know, I I certainly don't have all the answers. As I've said, I am not an expert, as I have said, but I know right and wrong. And this is wrong. What happened in Minnesota was 100% wrong. If you're able to protest, I, you know, 
fully support that. I fully think if that's what you want to do and that's what you're able to do, you absolutely should. Um, definitely protect yourselves because I know there is a lot of... I, you know, let's be real. The police are making it worse. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. They are making it worse. Uh, it is getting... I think more escalated with police there. We're at a point where we absolutely need to do something about this. And somebody pointed this out and I, I was thinking about this too. It's very telling that, you know, not what, three, four weeks ago, armed protesters were, were visiting the city halls and state capitals of places because they didn't want to be under quarantine because they'd been living for a whole five minutes where they couldn't do what they wanted. And yet, and that was fine. Nobody did anything. I mean, senators were going to their offices in Kevlar vests and police just, it's your second amendment, right? But when it comes to peaceful protesting, that's unacceptable to them. And I think that's, that's telling, you know, that says everything as far as I'm concerned.